press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hi students, welcome back to your English class. Today we are going to uh, deal with another chapter, the third chapter uh, around a medicinal creeper by Purna Chandra Tejasvi. Now this chapter, or this lesson is something written of an experience that the narrator himself is the author. The author and the narrator is the same person who tells us about his experience of a creeper that is there for a certain, uh, certain amount of time and then it disappears. You will not find it because it's being cursed. Is certain story that is being told by one of the characters in the uh, descriptions given below. But what I want to ask you or what I want you to know is how much of knowledge do we have about the herbs, uh, about certain uh, things that are used in Ayurveda? We have a little less knowledge. Those who get into it uh, do have a certain kind of knowledge about it. But for the rest of the population or most of the population has no idea what goes in with it or what is uh, curing uh, certain kind of diseases or what is helpful and uh, what has to be mixed with the other to be helpful. None of this is known to most of the population uh, in India. We have been dealing with Ayurvedic sciences for a very long time and that is uh, the foundation of our medicine, kind of medicine that uh, we have been evolving and evolved till now. Certain things are uh, we, we ourselves are unaware about. Now, in this lesson, what is being focused to you is it's a kind of a description given by the author, uh, something that happened along with his side. Now basically I want you to know uh, the author first and then we will move on to what's like a background of this lesson and then move further into the characters and then we will begin the lesson. Now this is in page 16. Alright. Um, this was basically written in Kannada. So this is a translation, a translated version or a translation that was done uh, by K. M. Srinivas Gowda. So he translated it from Kannada which was initially written by uh, Purna Chandra Tejasvi. Okay. This uh, man Purna Chandra Tejasvi was a writer, he, uh, a Kannada writer who has been uh, a lot uh, like an influential figure in Kannada literature. He was a novelist, a photographer, ornithologist is who studies or an expert on uh, birds. He was a publisher, painter, an environmentalist who has made a lot of impact on the Navya period in Kannada literature. Navya is a new period in uh, Kannada literature. And he has written a short story collection also, Abachurina Post Office. Okay, that's in Kannada. Abachurina Post Office. Uh, this is written, the, uh, this was written and then translated. He's also written poems and has also concentrated or written short stories that are there, novels, essays and he is a distinguished figure in Kannada literature. So we are studying it here. What I want you to know is a background that is there. I have written it down for you. See here, throws light on the misconceptions and mystifications is confusion on the medicinal herbs. Now what is this lesson telling us? It's telling us the different kinds of understanding that we have. We are not having full knowledge about certain things and we conceive it or take that knowledge wrongly. Misconception, you, are, you have taken the concept wrong or you have, no, you have a little or lack of understanding about these things, medicinal herbs. Mystification, sometimes we are confused, isn't it? Now, if we ask our grandparents, they really know what kind of a plant will cure or what kind of leaves you must use, what kind of flowers you must mix or whatever, they know everything. But if it's asked to our generation, we are less aware about these things. So we have a lot of mystifications in our mind, that's confusions. About what? About medicinal herbs, medicinal creepers. 
Now here in this lesson, um, it's concentrating on one creeper that is there, which is the story, entire story is revolving around that with um, mystifications, with lies that say, and then uh, about finding out or what is the exact cause of knowing these certain things. Now let me introduce you to the characters in this lesson around the medicinal creeper. First is the narrator, the author himself is the narrator, it's happening in his estate, Mara, Sanna. Now when we go to this uh, Mallard region, this is known for a coffee estate, isn't it? Coffee is grown there, coffee plantation is grown. So in these kind of estates, the story lies there in the Mallard region in Karnataka. Sanna, Krishna, Malayali Sadhu, okay, Krishna uh, was a rickshaw driver for the narrator in his estate earlier, but now he has fallen sick and he has uh, he stopped working there. There's a Malayali Sadhu, Chandru is a plant pathologist and a white man, he's a doctor who is working in Huli Hindalu, all right? So, uh, these two are the same persons who is narrating or who is telling us this is an experience, the author is telling us, it's the same person, Mara, Sanna, Krishna, okay, Malayali Sadhu, Chandru and the white man is a doctor. So, Mara and Sanna are important. I don't want you to confuse yourself with characters. Now, in a lesson, in another lesson, Watchman of the Lake, we have a character called Mara. So, don't confuse yourselves with uh, that Mara, the watchman of the lake and this our Mara uh, in this lesson around medicinal creep. Okay, let's begin. Follow your copies on page 16. Around the medicinal creeper, Purna Chandra Tejasvi. This is the story of an unusual medicinal creeper. There were so many stories about this creeper. Some true, some imaginary, and some totally false. So there is uh, this story that is revolving. The title itself suggests, isn't it, around a medicinal creeper, that is going around, something that is revolving in the same uh, atmosphere, same place that is there. So this is about some unusual medicinal creeper. There have been a lot of stories about this creeper. Some are true, some are made stories, okay, built up stories, imaginary stories. Some are absolutely false that had to be told. To go beyond these stories and learn some facts about this plant took me almost 20 years. Now the uh, author tells us those stories that were some, some were true, some were false, some were imaginary, to think beyond those stories and to find out what really is the uh, fact or what is the reality? It took the narrator 20 long years to find it. A coffee seed bed had to be protected from the sun by putting up a shade over it. Now, if you go to this uh, coffee plantation area, they, they, uh, they built this uh, shade-like area so that the sunlight doesn't fall directly, but it form, it, its rays come through beams inside. Okay, if you go to this uh, Malnad region, you will find it. So a coffee seed bed had to be, uh, uh, coffee, coffee seed bed was laid and it had to be protected from the sun so that direct sunlight doesn't enter it. So they had to put a, or lay a shade over it. They had to make a, uh, a, a kind of a shelter for it. Once we were erecting a bamboo frame for such a shade, and we needed something which we, we could tie the cane pieces placed across the frame. Now what they were doing, they were trying to build that shade for that coffee seed bed and they, want, they were um, setting right the bamboo frames, okay. They were uh, these bamboo um, frames that are there, they were keeping it in places, erecting is making it stand straight, okay. And they had kept it all over to make that shade for that and they needed something to tie those bamboos, uh, bamboo canes there. It's like a, a, a square kind of a place. Now they had to tie one end to the other. That cane, bamboo canes, what they wanted to tie, they wanted something to uh, make it tight so that it would stand. So we sent Sanna to get some creepers from the forest. 
Now the first character, uh, the second character is introduced. Now I is a reference there or to the author. So we send Sanna to get some creepers from the forest. If you have seen in villages, if they don't, they, they usually uh, don't use these uh, threads and other things or uh, they, they just go to these forests and bring these creepers and just tie it off or certain kind of uh, hard, hard or long growing creepers, that is what they used to tie. If you go to the villages, uh, please find out. So they sent Sanna to bring one of the creepers so that they could tie these bamboo frames. He brought a whole bundle. He brought a big bundle of creepers. Mara opened the bundle and while sitting, uh, sorry, sifting, sifting is sorting out, sorting out, okay? Examining and sorting out, sifting. So he picked, uh, our Sanna has picked a lot of uh, creepers and made it into a bundle and has brought it to the place where Mara and the narrator are, the author is. So Mara was, oh, Mara has opened it, now he is examining, he is looking at uh, or sorting out the creepers that are needed. He suddenly looked at one of the creepers and scolded Sanna. Hey, why did you pluck this, you fool? So what does he say? One of the creepers, Mara picks and tells Sanna, what a fool are you, why did you pick this and come? Why did you pick this creeper, why did you bring it? When I inquired, he said, and it was a medicinal creeper. So Sanna has replied that it is a medicinal creeper which can cure you some diseases. Sanna said that there was plenty of it in the forest. Mara eagerly said, come show me where it is and took Sanna into the forest. Now Sanna said, there are a lot of medicinal creepers like this in the forest. Mara was uh, curious to know. So he said, uh, he told Sana, let's go to the forest and they both uh, walk ahead to the forest. Out of sheer curiosity, I also went with them. So the narrator, the author, he was also curious to know what kind of a medicinal creeper is this. So he also went with them. That is how I got to know about this medicinal creeper. Till then the author didn't know that there was a medicinal creeper of this kind when with curiosity he went along with Sanna and Mara to the forest. That is the day he realized that there is a medicinal creeper. When Sanna showed the plant, Mara became very active. He caught hold of one of the tendrils and tied it to a nearby tree. Okay. Now, when Sanna showed Mara the creeper, Mara became very active and very excited to see it. So he took one of the um, just blooming tendrils and then tied it to a nearby tree. I was surprised at that and asked, Mara, why did you tie that creeper to the tree? Now the author is uh, surprised and asked, what is the need for you to tie this creeper to the uh, tree, Mara? I want to know the reason. The thief, he said, now it will be lying here. So what did Mara reply? This creeper is a thief, so I have tied it over here. Why? Where do you think it will run to? I asked him. So the author says, what kind of a thief? Where, where will the medicinal creeper run? Why are you calling it a thief and tying it around? Where will it run? It's not a human being or an, uh, anything else that can move. So it will be there wherever it is. Why are you trying to... Uh, tie it over. Oh, you don't know about this creeper. So he tells the author, Mara tells you don't know about this creeper. It has been cursed by a sage. So a sage has cursed this medicinal creeper. The curse is that when someone needs this plant, they shall not find it. So what is the curse? Whenever someone is in need of that plant or when someone needs that plant, they will not find it. So when you want it and search for it, you won't be able to find it for dear life. He says when you are uh, in necessity of that medicinal creeper and when you really want it, uh, you will not find it. You're not going to find it anywhere the day or the moment you need it, you're not going to find it. That was the uh, kind of curse. That is whenever you need, you want 
find it. That is why when you find it, you must immediately tie it to a nearby plant so that it will be lying there, explained Mara. So what has Mara said? Because of that curse that the sage did, that whenever you want it, you won't find it. That is why whenever you get hold of it, you simply tie it around a tree so that it will remain there and it will not get, uh, you, will, you can find it some, some time else. So it will be lying there, it will not go anywhere else or it will disappear so that you know it is still there. Mara explains it to the author. This creeper has small leaves resembling beetle leaves and bears fruit in a bunch like grapes. So this creeper has uh, beetle leaves, okay, big uh, beetle leaves, if it is, beetle, le beetle leaves are like this. Okay, big ones, beetle leaves. So this creeper has these beetle leaves and has a bunch like grapes. Immediately after the rains, this, plants, this plant comes up and flowers very quickly, puts forth flowers and puts forth flowers and fruits and dies. So what's happening to this creeper? Uh, after the rains, okay, after the rainy season, this plant will come up. It will bear fruits and flowers. Okay, flowers will come very quickly. It will, fruits will come out again after that and then after the fruit it immediately dies. What is that fruit? Grape like bunch that comes and these beetle leaves that makes the creeper. It comes up again only in the next rainy season. So only during the rainy season you can find, immediately after this rains you can find this creeper. As soon as the rain stops, the uh, creeper is no more. Again you will have to wait for the next rainy season to come. So in between, no one sees this plant. That is, between the rainy seasons, you won't find this plant at all. Because it is not seen for most of the year, they probably tie it to a tree nearby so that it can be easily identified or located. Now, because the plant is going to disappear, it's not going to be there once the rains stop. That is why whenever you get hold of it or whenever you find it, you tie it to a tree and nearby tree and keep it so that whenever you need you can identify through that tree or locate it whenever you are in need. But Mara's stories are so bizarre that one does not know which is true and which is false. Mara's stories are in such a way that sometimes you cannot believe whether they are true or whether they are false. All bogus kind of things. This is not confined only to people like Mara. The entire system of Indian medicine suffers from this kind of mystification. Now the author says, see this problem is not only of Mara. Little knowledge, okay? Little knowledge is too bad. Uh, the author tells us, this is not the problem of only Mara, but the entire Indian population or the system that we have in Indian medicine suffers from this kind of uh, mystification, that is confusion. This kind of a confusion we all people have. We don't have the right knowledge. Uh, when we have right knowledge or when we know what these uh, medicines, Ayurvedic medicines do to us, then we really know how it will affect or how it will continue for us. But that's what I told you in the beginning. Most of the population is unaware of these kind of uh, medicinal things that are just found in our neighborhood maybe. Sometimes we don't care about those plants. We don't even know its importance. Some plants grow on its own and then they uh, Sometimes it's there, sometimes you don't find them. It dries up sometimes, sometimes it's just gone. But how important that plant is, most of the population doesn't know it. So we all are suffering from this kind of uh, confusion that's there in our mind. We really don't know which is good, which is bad. And we also don't want to put in hard work and uh, know properly why that kind of a plant is important or how it's important. So this kind of a confusion, he says, 
not only with Mara, but the entire Indian Ayurvedic medicine also, Indian medicines also suffer from it. In all my wanderings in the forest with Masti, Bhaira, Aparna, Mara and others, and this Masti, Bhaira uh, will only come over here. So other people who are working with him. I gleaned many things, okay? So as, so, as they were uh, wandering or going about in the forest with uh, these people who were working with him, Aparna, Mara, Masti, Bhaira, he learned and he saw many things that he didn't see before. Among them were a few things I learned about some of these plants and herbs. So the author till now didn't know about certain things and when he was wandering in the forest or when he was going about in the forest with these people, he learned about certain uh, medicinal creepers and herbs and these plants. Now the forests are disappearing and the people who know about it, these things are also leaving us one by one. So what's happening? The forests are anyway going because of deforestation. People want uh, sophisticated and luxurious lives. So forests are of no value to people. So people cut down trees. So he says, the old heavy and dense forests that were there are all disappearing. And the people who had knowledge about certain things are also going one by one. That's, that is, they are also dying of one by one. We can't have access to uh, anything after that. Now, if a person who has a knowledge of certain things, which nobody knows, and if he dies off, then who will take over? Somebody should know, isn't it, to take it over. If nobody knows, then everything what the person knows will also die off with him. So that is how sharing is important. So, all right. One must realize that if one disappears, the other becomes useless. See, this is what I told you. If there is only one person who has a certain kind of knowledge, after the person dies, that thing, what is remaining is useless for the rest of the population because they don't know what to do with that kind of uh, uh, knowledge or that kind of thing that is there or that kind of an experimentation that has to be done. So if there is one, this should also be complemented by the other. Otherwise, if, the, if something goes, the other thing is useless. Now, here you can compare. See, forests are disappearing. Then the value of medicines or Indian medicines becomes useless. When we have forests, we can experiment. When we, have don't, when we lose people who have those values, the rest of the knowledge is useless. I'm very keen to share the information I have with someone. Someone should be aware of these things, but whenever I try to discuss the unique properties of these plants and herbs with my doctor friends, they become annoyed, call me ignoramus, and even squabble with me. All right, now the author says, I want to share this information with someone. It's always like that, it never keep your knowledge for yourself, share it. When you share it, you learn more, and at least they will also tell somebody, so the knowledge is revolving and it's going about. So he says, I want to make people aware. I want to discuss certain things about these herbs, about these plants, about these creepers, so that we have a discussion. We have a, a fruitful debate. We have everything so that we can uh, seek knowledge. So what he does, he goes to his friends who are doctors, and then he discusses with them the unique properties or uh, importance of these herbs. But this doctor friends, the author's doctor friends, call him ignoramus, that is ignorant. Okay, and they even squabble is um, like picking up a fight. Okay, they want to quarrel on things that are not important. Not an important matter, but they still pick out a fight and an argument, that is squabbling. So his doctor friends ignore him because they are not interested in uh, these uh, unique properties that the narrator wants to or the author wants to discuss with his friends and then they pick up an argument so that he can just stop it over there. That day, the Mara tying up the plant praised it to be this, praised it to the sky saying that every inch of it is medicinal, 
He did not tell me what exactly it cured. So the author says, though Mara told me that every inch of this plant, that is the fruits, the flowers, the leaves, the stem, everything is equally, has equal medicinal properties. So the narrator tells, even though he told me that it has medicinal properties, he didn't tell me what it can cure, how it can help, or which sickness can be treated by this. He didn't tell me that. Whether he did not want to tell me or simply did not know, I can't say. So the uh, author says, whether his intentions were in a way that he really didn't want to tell me is one way. Another way is he himself doesn't know uh, the medicinal properties, but only knows that this plant has medicinal properties. We do, isn't it, sometimes. We say Tulsi is good, Tulsi is good. But what kind of a property Tulsi has, we don't. We say Neem is good. What does Neem do? We don't know. So this is how uh, he, the author says, either it can be like that or either Mara really didn't want to tell me the medicinal properties. I didn't force him. Mara spun such exciting yarns that instead of tying it to the tree, even if he had tied the creeper around his own neck, people were not likely to take him seriously. So what's happening here is, the author, Mara has been working in his estate there. The author says, Ma, even, if the Ma, even if Mara ties the creeper to the tree, or he ties around his neck, nobody is going to, or people are less likely to, believe the stories that Mara tells them. Or they will not take him seriously because maybe Mara, you will know why they are not taking him seriously or you will know what kind of stories do Mara, uh, does Mara tell people, okay? Do they really have some importance or they don't? So, the author tells us, even if he had tied the uh, creeper to the tree or his neck, people would are less likely to believe him. But his stories were marvelous even when they were not true. Extremely good, marvelous. So he says, whatever, he may be telling true or false, the way he tells his stories is awesome. The way he tells his story is superb or marvelous. One day, it seems, Mara had gone to the forest to bring some bamboo shoots home. Now this is the first story. Alright, so you have to mark. There are stories coming forward. So this is the first story for you. So Mara has gone to the forest now to bring some bamboo shoots which he wanted at home. With his hands thrust, with his hands thrust through the bamboo cane, when he was cutting the shoot, he accidentally cut his hand. Okay, thrust is sudden or violent. So when his hands suddenly went or violently went through the bamboo cane, what happened? While he was cutting that shoot, uh, his hand suddenly went through the bamboo shoot and he cut his hand. The sharp sickle had apparently cut an artery and it started bleeding copiously in spurts. Now, um, sickle is... Okay, this is a sickle. Okay, you break the coconut or whatever it is, it's a sickle. So what happened with the sickle when he was cutting? Uh, he cut his artery, okay? Now, this is one of the tubes where your blood flows, okay? From the heart around to the body, your arteries. So while he was cutting with the sickle, he cut one of his arteries and it started bleeding copiously, copiously is overflowing abundantly, okay, in spurts. It was continuous overflow of blood. Everyone around was alarmed and someone brought some leaf, pressed it against the wound and bandaged it with a cloth torn from one of their lungis. So uh, once, 
Mara's hand started bleeding. One of the fellows there, what did he do? People around uh, saw Mara being hurt. One of them went and brought one leaf, one kind of a leaf. They pressed it against the wound, okay, and with the uh, cloth, one, they tore one of their lungis, a little bit of the cloth, and they bandaged it. We do, isn't it? We keep, so we keep cotton and then the bandage it. So here, what did they keep? They kept the leaf. Mara held his wounded hand carefully so that it would not shake too much and went to the white man at Kuli Hindalu for proper dressing and treatment. Okay. Now, uh, basic first aid is done so that the blood doesn't flow. But still, uh, Mara was very careful with his hand. He did not shake it much and he went to the white man. The doctor, next character introduced there to Huli Hindalu to dress the wound properly and give him some kind of a treatment to his hand. The white man got out his first aid kit, cotton, medicines, antibiotic powder, etc., opened the bandage and removed the leaf. Surprise! What's the surprise? So what did this man do? The white man? He, he, Mara has come for treatment, isn't it? So what did he do? He took his, brought his first aid kit, he brought cotton, he brought medicine, antibiotic powder and then he opened the uh, cloth that they was covered and opened it and he removed the leaf. Just as he removed the leaf, there was a surprise. What's the surprise? There was no blood, no wound, in fact no sign of any wound having been there. Can you believe? There was no blood, absolutely no blood. We know Mara has uh, cut his hand with a sickle. But when the white man opens that bandage and removes the leaf, he cannot absolutely see no wound there. He sees absolutely no wound, no blood that is flowing and no sign at all of any wound on his hand. Now the white man became very angry with Mara. The white man was very angry because simply he has come, isn't it? Useless thing, nothing is there on his hand. You fool, are you joking? He shouted. So the white man got very angry for uh, what, the, what Mara did and he said, you fool, are you joking me or are you, what are you doing? Do you think I am a joke here or you have come here simply? He shouted. Mara showed him all the blood on his clothes and body and cringed him, cringed before him saying that he was not lying. Okay. So, cringed is shrink back, okay, head behind, bent. So, he told uh, that white man there, look at the blood on my clothes. If you, if you think I'm lying, look at the blood on my clothes and he, he started to bend down and show him, okay. Because earlier his blood was flowing, isn't it? Overflowing. And spurt is a sudden burst of speed. Alright. Now this man, white man was still alarmed or still surprised to see this uh, Mara. Looking at all this, the English man believed Mara. Now Mara said, look at the blood on my clothes. And then the English man finally believed Mara, what Mara had to say. He took the leaf that had been kept on the wound and told Mara, show the plant from which you pluck this leaf, I will give you my entire plantation. So the doctor now challenges Mara and says, uh, give that leaf, he took that leaf that was covered, uh, that the leaf that covered Mara's wound, he took that leaf and he told Mara, come on, please show me that uh, uh, plant from where you took this leaf. If you do, if you show me this, I will give you my entire plantation in return. Mara took him to the forest and even though they searched for an entire day from morning to evening, they did not find the plant which had similar leaves. So Mara agreed to show him. But when they went to the forest, what happened? They could not find this plant anywhere, even though the whole day, this morning to evening, they started searching. They really could not find this plant. Basically, they could not identify the plant. He was angry because he thought that Mara was so greedy 
that even though he had offered him this entire estate, he was not satisfied. Now this white Englishman got very angry, saying that when I've offered him such a big plantation of mine, why is he still refusing to show me that plant? Let's see if Mara intentionally is doing it or is it like really is not finding that plant. So he took out his gun and pointing at Mara said, if you don't show it to me, I will shoot you down. So he took his gun and he was pointing at uh, Mara and he said, if you don't sh show me the plant, I am going to shoot you down. Now Mara was shivering and he started crying loudly, loudly. So Mara was trembling, okay, shaking and he started crying loudly because this was a kind of threat. He fell at the Englishman's feet and begged him and said that he really didn't know. Now Mara has fallen at the feet of the Englishman and he is begging and saying that I really don't know about this plant. I believe the Englishman now really angry said, get out and drove him out. And the Englishman was very angry because uh, he thought Mara was on purpose not showing him the plant even though he had identified it. Let's see uh, what uh, Mara has to say. So the Englishman says, get out from here, I don't want to see you. Hearing the story, I also showed my irritation and said, yours is a cock and bull story. Now the author was also narrated and uh, irritated and the author said, yours is a cock and bull story. Cock and bull is a phrase. Okay, and this phrase means an unbelievable uh, tale or unbelievable story that you say. So you say, yours is a cock and bull tale or yours is a cock and bull story. It's a phrase. Cock and bull means unbelievable tale or unbelievable story, unbelievable fact, anything. Yours is a cock and bull story. Totally fabricated. You have polished it. Okay, what kind of a story did you say, Mara? Totally polished and very sweet for anybody to uh, while away with you. So it was unbelievable, not, I could not believe what you said. If you had gone and searched near the bamboo bush where you had hurt your hand, would you not have found the leaf and the plant? So the author tells him, see where you hurt your hand. You hurt your hand while you wanted to bring bamboo home. So if you had gone to the same place, because as soon as you, uh, hit your hand or as soon as Mara hit his hand near the bamboo shoot, immediately that's the place where he has taken the leaf, isn't it? So the author tells him, if you had gone to the same place where uh, you hurt your hand near the bamboo, uh, bamboo shoots where you wanted the bamboo shoot, wouldn't you get the leaf? Wouldn't you get the plant? To which he replied with another story that the mongoose and the kaukal also about this plant also knew about this plant and that when they go hunting snakes, if they are bitten, about, bitten by poisonous snakes, they immediately chew this leaf and thus cure themselves. So he directly didn't answer the author's question of whether you would not uh, find this plant or this uh, leaf. He gives another story in written to the author of a mongoose and a cow call. A cow call is a crow peasant as a long, large tailed bird. Maybe uh, a large tailed bird, something like this. Which has a, a big tail. Have you seen there are birds which is mostly brown in color? which has a big tail like this, okay. If you go to the forest, uh, forest areas you will find it, okay, the forest, not like a peacock, not like a peacock but uh, small brownish uh, birds that are there, okay, peasant. So Mara gives another story in return to uh, the question that the author asks. He tells about this Mongol and the cow, mongoose and the Kaukal, saying that whenever uh, they go hunting, whenever these people used to go hunting, if 
uh, these are bitten by the snakes, they also knew about this plant. And if they are bitten by snakes, what do they do? When poisonous snakes bite them, they immediately go and chew these leaves, leaves and uh, they can cure themselves on their own. Mara did not have any teeth on the right side of his mouth. He had to chew everything on the left side. He was aged and perhaps they had fallen off naturally. But why only one side? Now see again another story. Mara didn't have teeth on the right side. So what he has to do? He has to eat all his food on the left side. But the author thought, ah, okay, maybe he's aged and maybe they have fallen off naturally. But what is surprising is, why only right side? Left side is intact. Why right side? I was curious. The author is curious. One day, I asked him how he had come to lose all the teeth only on one side. How he lost teeth only on one side and why one side is still there. He told me an interesting story. This is another story. It seems that they had fallen out, fallen out long ago and not as a result of his advancing age. So uh, Mara says, his teeth had fallen long, long ago and not because of his uh, age or because he is aging, it's not like that. Once he had laid a trap in the forest to catch rabbits. He was worried that somebody else may get there before him in the morning and take away his catch. So he, what he did uh, one day in the forest, he wanted to catch rabbits. So he went early in the morning even before somebody else could catch that trap of his. So he went to the forest before daybreak, even before the day uh, could begin, he went to the forest so that nobody else catches the rabbits that he wants and he can trap them and bring them. The trap was empty. So whatever trap he had laid down for them, no rabbit came in. No rabbit had walked into it. Since there was a stream flowing nearby, Mara decided to brush his teeth and wash his face before trekking back home. So there was a stream that was flowing. Anyway, Mara had gone very early. So he thought he'll just brush his teeth and wash his face or freshen up there. When he broke a small stick from a nearby plant to brush a third or fourth time, he felt a sour taste in the mouth. So he took uh, a stick from the nearby plant and he was uh, brushing his teeth. When he did it for the third or the fourth time, he felt some uh, sourness in the mouth. He thought there was something wrong with the stick and threw it. So he thought something wrong with the stick, why am I feeling sour and he uh, threw it. Before he could try another stick, he wanted to rinse his mouth. So before he could, not, he could try uh, uh, another stick on his mouth and brush inside his mouth and brush his teeth, he thought, I will take away this uh, sourness, I'll just rinse my mouth. He took some water from the stream, put it in his mouth and after churning it around in his mouth, spat it out. So he put the water, he's churning around his mouth, uh, he took everything and then he spat it out. Surprise! Oh, all the teeth which had been touched by the stick tumbled out of his mouth. So again another surprise, whichever part had been touched by that stick, they all started to tumble down, fall, fall down. Okay? Tumbling is falling one by one. If you have heard that Humpty Dumpty sat in a wall, and came tumbling, or Jack and Jill came tumbling after. Yeah, that is tumbling, coming down. So his teeth started to fall down from his mouth. Thank God, I was saved because I had not brushed all the teeth. Otherwise, I would have not had any teeth left to eat even rice. So he says, thank God, at least I brushed only on one side and that came down. If I had put all, it, all over my uh, mouth, then all would have come down and I couldn't even eat rice. I rebuked him. Okay, rebuked is uh, speak severely for doing something, kind, some kind of a wrong thing. Hey Mara, if you want to tell lies, they must be at least believable. So the author says, see, tell lies in such a way that the other person will believe. Mara said, can't you see that I've lost all, all the teeth 
all those teeth? This is, what more proof do you want? Can't you see that I've lost teeth on one side of my mouth? Then come and show me the plant. Okay, so the author is curious now, he says, show me the plant. How can I show you the plant? There are hundreds of plants in the forest. You do one thing, sir. You can try brushing your teeth with each of them. Then we can find out which has this effect. So Mara is pissed off. Now Mara says, uh, where can I show you the plant? There are hundreds of plants in the forest. Let's do one thing. Let's go on trying all the sticks there. And then we'll find out which one works to put your teeth also down from your mouth. Why should I? You are the one who is lying. So you have to brush your teeth with all those plants and discover the right one. So the author says, why should I brush my teeth? The you are the liar. You are lying. So we will go and find out and discover it on you. And then eventually we'll find the right one. My God, there are so many plants in the forest. I won't live long enough to try each and every one of them. He says, my goodness, there are so many plants in the forest. Even if I go and try each one of them, by then I will die off. In my entire lifetime, I would not be able to try all of them. Hey Mara, if you keep trying out different ones, you may find the right one, which is, make, which is going to make your teeth come back. So the narrator says, let's go on trying. We'll try different ones. Maybe there may be one more stick which, which can uh, make uh, a, a thing like that where all your teeth come back into your mouth. We'll try all that also. And this is like plants uh, uh, and this is like saying in something some other way where tit for tat, is it it? Mara is saying something and the narrator is saying something back. How can I say which type of plant I will stumble upon? Okay, stumble is hit your foot against. Sometimes when you're walking if there is something you stumble like this, okay, stumbling. Just my bad luck, if I get one which kills me. So Mara says, how do I know which uh, plant I will stumble upon or where I will set my foot onto? If, I've, if possibly if I eat a plant and which will kill me, which I will die, then why are you asking me to try? Okay, then the author does, why are you asking me to try then? Because you are the one who is accusing me of lying. So Mara says, you are the one who is telling me, isn't it? I am a liar, so you try. Suppose you come up on the one that will bring your youth. So he says, if we get any plant that will make you young again, I don't even want that. If I become young, I will have to marry again. Okay? So what does he say? I don't even want uh, the plant where I have to become young because if I become young, I have to marry again. Let that be, don't think that such a plant does not exist in a forest. He said and told me another story. So Mara says, if I become young, I will have to marry again. I don't want that youthfulness again. But let's not assume it in such a way that we don't have a plant like that. We may have a plant which can make us young. We have not yet discovered. He said and told me another story. So we'll stop at this and we'll uh, see another story in the coming class and see what other things Mara has to tell uh, the author. So here today, you have learnt about certain stories. I want you to uh, read the introductory part. And the first story is of the uh, cutting his hand, going to the doctor, okay? Then of uh, the mongoose and the kaukal that he says. Then he uh, about the about his teeth and how he went on to find the rabbit and about his teeth. The coming stories we will find out in the next part or in the next class. Today, uh, read how much we have finished so that uh, you have an idea of uh, what's going on and how we can move forward with the story. All right. This was uh, the beginning of Around a Medicinal Creeper. Thank you very much for listening.